Good morning. This is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles and welcome to episode 17. Today is August 31st, 2024, and I am coming to you from Texas. Uh, I live in the um, Fort Worth area of Texas, and today we're having a bit of a cool down. It's only supposed to get to 90 today at Fahrenheit. So that's about 10, 15 degrees lower than it has been. <laughs> Okay, I just want to welcome you aboard. We have some new um, new people as well as my OGs, and I welcome you all. I am excited about this episode. It's taken me a little bit of time to get here, and I will explain at the end of the video if you're interested on what all has been happening in my life that caused me to take a little bit longer time than I was planning. Okay, so let's see. What do we have in store today? First off, any information on how to get a hold of me is down in the description box below. I keep it all there. And then um, if you're new, this I usually do record once a month and then have some extra stuff thrown in from time to time. Uh, extra stuff coming up is the DFW Fiber Fest next month. And... I'm going back to Virginia on a trip and I'm hoping to be able to hit a couple of yarn shops while I'm there and be able to do a little bit of a video of that trip. I'm going on my own um, for a special occasion out there is the church that I came out of in Virginia I grew up in uh, is 50th anniversary and um, it's also where I graduated high school. So 40 years ago. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. <laughs> We're going to move on, okay? And then I am so ready for the change of season. Here in Texas, I probably won't see it for another month or two. <sighs> yeah. So I am going to pretend that it's actually fall. Yeah. Because I need a mindset. I don't know about any of you that are in the Northern Hemisphere, but I need a little bit of a mindset. And so I have decided to do a make-along. And this will be my first make-along over on Ravelry on the Belinda's Bobbles uh, Ravelry um, group. So go on over there. It's just going to be a fun, easy one. It I've called it the um, Halloween Make along, and so it's whatever you want to make that has that reminds you of fall, reminds you of Halloween. Has you know whether it's colors, yarn, pattern, or you just want to say that it does. <laughs> if you're in the summer southern hemisphere, you may want to you know you can throw in a mock Halloween. As far as for you, Halloween is spring colors and. Uh, bits of summer so it's got that halloween part on it for you so even if it's something along those lines you are welcome to join in with that uh, just so that we can see en entry is just posting on the ravelry page and now if you don't have ravelry that's okay email me at belinda's bobbles at gmail.com and i will post it on there for you and that will be an entry whether it's if you want to send me your plans, what you're going to do, um, photos of your yarn, anything along those lines, you will still get entries. And then at the end, after um, Halloween, I will draw for a pattern prize. I'm doing more pattern prizes like a lot of people are right now because I want to open it up to the world. And right now I still have a pattern over in my yarn cabinet that I need to get out because the winner is somewhere I can't send it to from the United States. So she's um, going somewhere else um, in, the, in the world shortly. And so I'll be able to send it to her there. <laughs> so sometimes you have to send it on vacation. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty much all I have to say on the startup stuff, I think. Yep. Where to find me, the date, the weather, and the make-along. So let's get on in to finished objects. As you can see, I am wearing a finished object. 
I wanted to make two tops to go to um, the DFW Fiber Fest because I was excited having a weekend off and being able to go to a couple of days. Yeah, I'll explain how that went awry at the end. So I'm probably only going to get to go to one day now, but I have two tops to choose from. Or I may just change my top partway through the day. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay, so my first one here is the Flutter Butt Shirt. Let's see if I can show it to you a little better. Ta-da! It has little flutteries here down the bottom. Okay, I'm going to put a video up here so you can see it better. And I love this top. Uh, now, I started out because you start, it's a bottom up top. It, this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But I started at the bottom and it, um, in a 1X, and it just felt too big. So I changed it up to, and um, brought it into a size medium. And I'm glad I did. You know, a lot of them, um, they're wearing them bigger. But I liked it, how this one fit, especially with this yarn. This is Barocco Dolce, and it is this gorgeous purple. And this yarn, they consider it a four or worsted, but it's just such a fluffy, fluffy yarn. You wouldn't think it was that, but it does, it does cover a lot, cover a lot more than you would expect. Um, I've ended up using two colors because it was on clearance at On the Lamb Yarn Shop. So she only had four skeins, which was 700 yards, 200 grams, because they were 50, uh, 50 gram balls. And this is in the low light, low lighty, color 2024 um, color, which is, you know, a purple. And then... In case I needed more, which I did, <laughs> she had another color that I thought would go with it, and this is called Opal, which I did just a border on the sleeves, and then most of my ruffle. Now, what I ended up doing was I used all of the yarn. I have a little bitty ball about that big left, and that's it, of the Opal. The purple, I have nothing left except what I trimmed off the ends. I hope you can hear me okay. I've got the air conditioner going, and I'm sorry, I'm not turning it off today. So it may come and go in the background. I'm hoping the microphone doesn't pick it up much. But back to this. So you add the ruffle at the end. And I just went ahead and continued with my purple until it was gone. And then I added in the opal. And I'm glad I did because, you know, I have nothing left as far as I don't have any yarn to figure out what I'm going to do with or anything. And this is just such a soft, comfy top. Um, I'll be able to wear it in the winter um, over top of, I've got some, um, some gray, gray tops that I could put it over top of. So I've got some options. And... I figured when I first looked at the flutter butt, which I know it says flutter butt, it's B-U-T-T -T for butterfly. I found that out. When I first looked at it, I thought, you know, I'm too old for all these ruffles and everything. No, I'm not. They make me happy, so I'm not all too old for it at all. <laughs> uh, so, oh, Whenever I figured out the yardage for that 1X, because of course I did not um, swatch first, I would have ended up with about five inches of positive ease. So it would have been way out there. So that's why I reduced it down to the medium stitch count, which made it to where everything just worked out perfectly. All right, so what do I have next? I actually have my notes here on my computer pulled up. I have another finished object. I've just made, made me some iced mocha coffee here in my sweet tea mason jar that I got at, uh, I got it in Waco whenever we went down there. Okay, so let me go back over. Okay, so I finished up my rivage top with Whoopi yarn. 
I'm not going to discuss the yarn very much at all, um, other than it is the color fire, because of the fact that I did a um, review. So you can go over and take a look at the review for more information on the yarn itself. But here, it's all wrinkled up and everything. I've worn it. I still need, I need to wash it again, but this is the rivage top. This is a free pattern from Drops. And it, this, I did this in the extra large size. 300 grams. This is sport weight, but it only ended up taking 300 grams for me. So I have enough to make another one if I wanted to. One of the things I really liked with some of the detailing on this rivage top, it's not a difficult one, but I'm, I've done very little um, lace. So this was a great one for me to start with. Stitch, I love the stitch definition on here. And it's got these garter edges. And how it just kind of moves down. Now, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep the ribbed bottom. I've thought about adding a little bit more and putting a garter edge on the bottom. So because of that, where is it? It's here somewhere. <laughs> I haven't woven in my end. I've got enough there that I can pick it out and I've got plenty of yarn to be able to add on. I'll put a picture up here of me wearing it so you can get an idea of how it looks on. It does have quite a bit of positive ease and with cotton, you know, as you wear it, it expands. But I really do like the way it fits. Now I did make a couple of alterations here. Of course, I made a few alterations, right? <laughs> uh, I actually used three different needle sizes. I started out up here with the size US2 2.75. After I got past the bust, it was slogging along and this is a very tight weave and it didn't have much drape. So I moved up to a size three, 3.25, and that gave it a lot more drape. And you really can't see that much difference between the top up here and down here as far as stitch definition. But it just gave it a little bit more drape, made it a little bit wider. And this was supposed to be an A-line, and I did not add the extra stitches to go into an A-line because I already had enough positive ease. But then I also used a US 6 4 millimeter hook to do the ribbing because I did not want it to sit gin at all. And of course that makes it to where the ribbing is just, it's ribbing. That's why I'm thinking about taking that out and going back and doing the garter edge stitch because it just, I love the finished look on it on both the sleeves and the neckline. Okay, so if you're interested in more information on the Whoopi yarn, um, which is the, this is the first time I've used Circulo yarn, it's new out of Brazil here in the U.S., uh, go over onto uh, the review that I did. Just So I did get something done <laughs> lately <laughs> for the channel. Okay, so... I do have a finished object from Bill, but I'm going to put it a little bit further in um, with my new little segment techniques from Bill because it's got some extra detailing to it. But I was going to tell you a little bit about this. Probably about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, possibly, uh, I was doing some hats on Etsy. And I made a few cowboy hats for kids. Well, we were going to have a stall at the Dallas Comic Con. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Um, selling some 3D stuff. So I made myself a Texas themed 
my Texas themed, a Texas themed Jane hat. <laughs> yes, I am a brown coat. I'm a Firefly fan. And so I wanted a Jane hat because Adam Baldwin was going to be there. So this is the first time I've ever paid for someone's autograph. <laughs> but this is basically a bucket hat and extreme. And I'm probably going, you know, there's quite a few different um, patterns out there already for cowboy hats, but I'm probably going to end up writing this one up as a free pattern um, just because with, well, with and without the Jane attachments, because I couldn't find much in the way of adult ones. And one of the adult ones I did was actually to add braids on it. And it was for um, someone who had commissioned it for uh a cancer patient that lost her hair. So anyways, there's my Adam Baldwin signature. And I can tell you right now, he did tell me that this was one of the most unique Jane hats he'd ever seen. And he had definitely never seen a Texas themed Jane hat before this. <laughs> so <laughs> I dug that out just to have some fun with it. Now, I do have one more of these. So, that I've already got made up and everything, and it's just sitting in storage. So, if there are any other Firefly fans out there that would like a Texas themed one, send me a message either on Ravelry, Instagram, or email me. And if I get more than one, I'll do a little drawing for it. But it needs, not this one, this one stays with me. You know, I'm not giving up my Adam, Adam Baldwin signature. <laughs> but if you want a plain one <laughs> in an adult size, just let me know and I will get that mailed out to you. Uh, like I said, if I get more than one person, probably I'll only have maybe one person interested, but if I get more than one person, I will do a, a little quick little drawing to make it fair. Okay, so... Okay, we're on to our next segment. And I'm not doing too bad in time. What do I have next? New construction. Sit back, get something to drink. I usually only cast on one or two things at a time. So for me, this was a cast on party for one because I have four new cast-ons and I cast them on before I cast these two tops off. So that should tell you I've been, I've been a little bit on the crazy side lately. I have definitely been knitting and crocheting my feelings. So let's see where we, where are we going to start? Let's see what comes up first. Aha. I have started a Scotch broom top by Woolen Pine. Instead of doing a confessions at the end, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you because this what this what is part of the confessions. Because more than likely, if I've got any new yarn, I've already cast it on lately. This is a Noro Tusabi Tusumbi Tusumbi. I'm going to let you read it but it's basically, we're calling them dragon eggs. I don't know if that's proper or not. Colorway is 22. And this is a number four worsted. 200 grams, 600 meters. Comes with all of this information, which I can't read, which... I need to send this to my Japanese sister and have her um, translate it for me. Yumi, if you're watching this, <laughs> help. <laughs> okay. So, put that down. 
and I just cast this on this week. I've been looking at the Scotch Broom, and it is a paid-for pattern by Wool and Pine, and they had a they had a sale or something going on recently, so I picked it up, and it actually is made, I think, for fingering weight. But I wanted to use it for this, which is worsted weight. So, Bill, I actually did break into my Ann Bud book. The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns, which my homework is that I need to make something out of here. Haven't done that yet, but I did go in... <laughs> And look at uh, what she co was calling for as far as stitch counts and everything for the size. And I um, pulled up, you know, I did do a swatch. Yes. I've already pulled it out. But I did do a swatch so that I could find out exactly what my stitch count was going to be according to and figure out from that which size to cast on for the Scotch broom since I was changing up. Now, this is a lot more math than I usually do when it comes to my um, knitted projects. So um, pat myself on the back. <laughs> and I did learn a new technique that they use, which is an I-cord cast on. I've never done that before. It's beautiful. It took me forever. I probably spent as much time doing the I cord as I have done three sets of the lace. <laughs> yeah, it took me an entire evening. And this is for a size extra small plus five stitches. Because what I need, what I figured out I needed, but I don't want a lot, with it being worsted, I don't want a lot of extra. But there's enough there. I don't even have it pulled out all the way. So I'm starting out with the Scotch broom. And you, you knit this in the flat for the front and the back and then join in the round. It is a beautiful top. It com looks comfortable. And it looks like something I would be able to wear over top. Now, I did change, I, I don't want to give too much information since it is a paid-for pattern, but with the Scotch Broom, um, I did lower my number of wraps because of the fact that it was just too tall with the worsted weight otherwise. And I am excited. I'm going to be going into this red and this pink. I don't know when I'm going to get into that part, but I'm thinking... I'm probably, when I do the back, I'm going to pull from the center because I'm, depending on where this ends up being, I may not get into this until it's knitted in the round. But we'll see. I figure also, since this is going to be the same on the front and the back, it may look like I have two different tops. <laughs> now, this is... Um, the Noro yarn that I have here, this is 50% silk, 25% wool, and 25% polymide. Now, it does not say it's super washed, so I'm assuming it's woolly wool and wood felt. And with the cotton feel to it and everything, it's not bothering me. I say that and I'm itching. It, it really hasn't bothered me much. So I'm hoping that with all that silk count and everything, it won't be an issue for wearing it. Plus, if I need to, I'll wear it more like a vest over top of a long sleeve top or something like that during the um, winter time. And I have this in my bag that I got from my pen pal. Look at that cotton on the inside. But um, this was and a bag exchange that I did. And I definitely came out ahead. <laughs> and it has become one of my favorite bags. 
Okay, so next up, I'm just going from tab to tab to see, well, no, let's just grab. <laughs> I'll just grab and see what I have next. Okay, again with Confessions, <laughs> this is Ella Ray. On the Lamb Yarn Shop's had some really good sales lately, and I've been shopping them. And this is Impressionist. Isn't that gorgeous? It's 65% cotton, 25% viscose, and 10% linen. It is a light worsted, a number three. Let's see, what's my grams? This is by Knitting Fever. Uh, well, it's, it's got 229 yards to 100 grams, so it's closer to a DK. And what I am making with this is a rectangle virus blanket. And it's going to be a rectangle baby virus blanket. This pattern, you can either pay for it or you can get it free by watching her videos on YouTube, which right now I'm just doing the free version, see how I do with it. And if I like it, I'll, I'll go pay, um, pay for the, um, the paid for pattern to be able to hold on to it. But it starts at, you know, with that rectangle and now I've started in on the virus crochet pattern. And it's going to continue with this as the colors just change up. And I am using, this is my messy cake. So I'm going into the green. I didn't tell you on my last pattern, did I? What I was using. Huh. Okay, so on the Scotch broom, I'm using a US 10 six millimeter. That's what I ended up getting my 20 gauge, which is 20 stitches per four inch in stockinette. And I have all this information over on Ravelry and I have links down below to all of this information. Um, I keep that updated. Okay. Back to the baby blankets. I have a bunch of great nieces and nephews coming. So <laughs> I'm doing a lot of baby blankets right now. But I am using a four millimeter G. This is one of my favorite hooks. I need to clean it a little bit right now. It's a Hobby Lobby hook and they usually cost like two or three dollars. It's plastic, but I love the ergonomic grip on it. So that is what's happening with it. There's not a whole lot to show on it yet, but I do like the pattern. And, you know, right now I actually have, of the cast-ons, I've got two knitted cast-ons and two crochet cast-ons. I'm actually working on my crocheting technique because the way I learned it was throwing it. And I taught a class recently, and so I had to brush up, and I'm getting better with doing the knife. Plus the fact, throwing it, I will never get any faster than I am now. Doing the knife, I'm noticing everybody else is a lot faster than me, and so I'm, test, I'm just testing my waters. Also, my hand is not swelling up as bad whenever I use that hold. So I'm able to get back to my crocheting more. So what is next? Did you miss my bright green? <laughs> I am working on a muscle burn hat for Seaver. Right now, he has my muscle bird hat, and he is using it to sleep in. He has shaved his head, and so with the air conditioner running, he gets his head gets a little bit cold. So um, he was wearing a hat that had ribbing on it, but then in the morning, he would have ribs all around his head. So he has found that he really likes the muscle bird hat because he actually uses it as a sleep mask also. 
So I told him if he really liked that one, that I would make him one of his own so I can get my hat back. Happened, oh, here it is. <laughs> I knew I had my band in there. Okay, so this is a Cascade Yarns Heritage. It is color 5656, 100 grams, you get 437 yards. And it's just, it's a green, it's green. Now, Muscle Pork Hat, if you haven't done it before, you, um, it is a free pattern. It's not my favorite hat. And the reason being is starting it out. It is so fiddly because I don't do magic loop, so I've got to do it on the, um, I have to do it on double pointed needles, which I don't mind working with double pointed needles, but there is a reason that I am a top down sock knitter. And this is the reason starting at the toe or starting at the, at the center drives me nuts. Now, once I got past that, it's perfectly fine. And I do love the way it looks. So this is going to end up being two colors. It's going to be the green as the main color. But then, I got my DPNs. I don't know what I've done with all my little um, holders. I won this. It's called a Lonely Sock Yarn. Um, for, it's 400 meters per 100 gram. It was a sock set, so it had this and a mini, and I've used the mini, which was a bright green and something else, or a hunter green, it was um, like spruce color. Yeah, the mini was in spruce, and this is hunting hunter sock set. It was a 70 gram sock set, so this will be 50 grams here. 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. And it's just a six stripe striper. But I had Seaver go through a few from the stash, and this was the one that he wanted to go with it. I think it's going to look great. I have all the information over on my Ravelry as far as how I'm doing the stripes and everything. And I'm using a US 5, 3.75. You know, here in Texas, by the time this doubles up, since it's done in a long tube and you fold it in half, it's going to be plenty thick for our purposes here in Texas. So I do a little looser gauge than a lot of other people because it's only, um, it's seven stitches per one inch. So that's pretty loose gauge. But it's what I really like on it. So this is, and this is the size large is the size I ended up using. Okay. So this is living in a bag that my stepmom Donna made me the triangle bags. I love these. And this other one was just, it's in the North Texas yarn crawl bag from 2023. I love that bag. I use it quite a bit. And I'm losing things. I'm trying to put things away as I go because I'm not very good at doing that. And then I have to come back and clean things up afterwards. All right. So this one is living in my Amy was here bag from McKinney Knittery. And what do I have in here? This is the Granny Go Round cardigan. It is by Iron Lamb. It is a paid for pattern. And I'm doing this as part of a make along with On the Lamb Yarn Shop. She's doing a granny go round car, um, sweater make along. But she told me I could do the cardigan because I'm like, I don't really want a sweater. I need more of a cardigan. And I was wanting fall colors, okay? Can you tell I was wanting fall colors? This also matched the cover of the book that I was, <laughs> I was reading at the time. 
<laughs> if you're if you see my post on Instagram, you will notice that I noticed that. So I just got the great part of crocheting. Let's see if I can get this on here. Is being able to try it on as you go. Except for your yarn. Okay. So it is a little tight possibly under the arms and I am a little concerned about that because my arms have gotten larger. Sorry, I've got you all covered up. Um, I am a little concerned at the moment over how tight the arm is and I'm thinking I'm going to rip back and do a couple of extra rows so that the sleeve is going to be a little bit bigger. But I do love the colors I chose. Sorry, excuse me a second as I unwind myself. Okay, so let's go through the colors. It's gonna be easier doing it this way, I think. Got them. Oh, no, I don't. I have not put them in my notes in Ravelry yet. I have been a bad girl. Okay. I am using a five millimeter hook. And what I have in here, let me get all my colors out. And my bands. Okay, please don't judge me. My yarn balls look horrible. So let's see what we've got going. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to pick things up. <laughs> so the black. Yeah. Is that one there? Or is that 220? Hold on. Bear with me a moment. That was that. No, okay. All right. So this is actually the orange. This is uh, Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash. It's a number three, so it is a D, and this one is a DK. Color is 1952, like a pumpkin. Then, where's my bag? Okay. So I can put it back in my bag as I go along. I have. A Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday DK. This is also a number three light. Yardages are a little bit different. And this is a teal. I had this left over. I'm not sure if I have it left over or if I haven't even used it yet. I'm not sure on that. I'll have to look back. As I said, I'm using hair clips to keep my yarn under control. Then I did that one. I also have a Premier Wool Select. This is in the color white. And I purchased, this is the only one that did not come out of my stash, was a Vintage DK by Barocco in black, which is color 2145. I just want something to make everything else pop. And then I have one hand dyed in this. This is Charming You Escalante. And this was the whole basis for the, all the other colors. And this is in her DK sock, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. So it is super soft. So I don't know what else to tell you on this. I'm doing a 
size five or extra large. And as, as I said, the, the underarm is just seems to be a bit tight. So after putting that on again, I don't want to take the chance of it actually stretching enough. So the good thing about crochet is it's pretty easy to um, pull back. And I'm only about five, five rows in on that. And I, I like where it hits me here, but I, don't, I can't take the chance here. Okay, so I decided that. Okay, bear with me a second here. So that's it for new construction. <laughs> Now on to in the works. I haven't worked on any of the other projects enough to even show it. I may have gotten maybe half an inch or an inch on anything. So, you know, I'm not pulling any of my in the works here. Instead, we're going to go over to techniques with Bill. Bill has retired. And so over this last month, He did something amazing and I want to share that with you and he's letting me share it with you. Okay, so I wanted to pull my photos up here so um, I would have some idea of how long my little videos are that I've done of this. So here is a picture of Bill. He's wearing short sleeves because it's summer right now. So <laughs> instead of the long sleeve shirts he would normally wear with this vest. But this is a Lourdes vest. Now this is a compilation of two different things. He has taken the pattern for the Lourdes jacket by Melissa Leapman, and that is oh, I'll put down below what book it's out of because he gave me the information, but it's on my phone, which you guys are on my phone right now. So he took the pattern for the Lourdes. And he used his regular um, vest pattern that he uses all the time from the Book of Sweater Patterns by Ann Budd. And he put the two together. And he did something amazing with it. Okay, so here is the starting up at the back just to be able to see that floor de lease pattern. The yarns that he used is Knit Picks Palette. The blue is marine heather, and then these golds are turmeric, semolina, safflower, and custard. Now take a look at his edging here. He's actually been able to match up the pattern at the top. You can see all his floats there and how he um, sewed it over. And just both sides there, they are just matched up. And he used the pattern as a guide as far as where he cut, the, cut it off and where he um, started bringing in the sleeves to be able to get it to all match, as well as in the vest. And it is just, you can see a little bit of the variations in the colors there. So... I cannot remember exactly. I think I'd have to sit here and count the patterns. Hold on. Let me take a look here. I can't remember how many repeats he said that it had, if it was a six re, um, stitch repeat or eight or, or whatever. But what he ended up doing was, let me pull the picture up here. If you take a look at the line, which I'll put an arrow here, of that center stitch, you can see where he started to come in. And then he just ran up that line. And then over on for the center, you know, he found his center for the um, V. And he pretty much did this same thing to where he would come up and meet up with one of the lines for the v-neck. Mm. 
Now he had also, you know, this, he did his um, normal that he does as far as the, for the V-neck, he did seek it in the technique that I'd shown you before so that he could do, do this in the round as much as possible and then just be able to carry it a bit. All right, so I'm very happy that I can bring you a, something that someone else has done like this, like my brother, because it's going to take me a long time before I get anywhere near this. <laughs> So if you're able to do stuff like this, or if this gives you inspiration, I am so happy. Um, I am wanting to use some of his techniques and try them out myself. So we can go on this little journey together. So that is the end of my little techniques with Bill. So on to my final section. Uh, the end of this is basically um, life happens. So if you're not interested in hearing about things that have been going on in my life in the last uh, month, you are more than welcome to just say goodbye here. Uh, thank you for coming along, and I will hopefully see you next time. Please, everyone, do like, subscribe, share, help me grow my channel. I'm really looking forward to getting to that next stage, which I'm hoping to get to 500 um, subscribers in the next year. It's just, we're growing slowly, but we're making a great community and that's all that matters and that we're having fun with it. So, life happens. I had some different plans for this past month. One was I was planning on going to Oklahoma's first yarn crawl, which was the last two weekends. But we ended up having a virus that went through the house. It was a horrible virus, Stever was sick and out of work for over a week and I had it for a few days and Sam came in and out of it and everything. It was just, it was horrible. So that took up part of our month. Also the fact that um, part, um, it became possible for me to be able to go to the 50th anniversary in Virginia, which I was not expecting to. So part of that was I told Sam, hey, we really can't afford to do two trips, um, even though I'm staying with family and everything whenever I get there. Uh, we can't really afford to do two trips, so I would give up the hotel room that we were going to have to do in Oklahoma and the driving and the gas and all of that um, and put that on the back burner and hopefully be able to go to it next year. So I didn't get to take y'all to the Oklahoma Yarn Crawl. I've heard it's great, but unfortunately, it just did not happen for me this year. It would have also been me going up right after I'd gotten well. But in the meantime, while we were sick, dad fell and he scared us. Uh, if you haven't, I introduced dad to you guys um, during Christmas in July, whenever he actually gave us a tour of the museum he's a docent at. And so y'all would have seen him there. And he scared me and my siblings pretty good, as well as my, uh, my stepmom. And we thought he had fallen off a ladder or something like that. All sorts of stories were going around. But when I talked to him, he actually just was picking up a big limb, fell backwards, lost his footing, and hit his back and his neck on the ground. And we thought he had broken his neck. This is what the doctors were telling us. Broken his neck, cracked a couple of vertebrae. They airlifted him to Dallas. And in the meantime, my family is sick. I can't go near him because there was no way I was going to get him sick during all of this as well. So we are relying on um, information going back and forth. Well, two weeks has gone by. He has been in a neck brace, has been pretty much housebound, which he hates being housebound. He is on the go all the time. And so even in his 80s, he's on the go all the time, working several jobs as well as his retirement. Uh, but, you know, he was told he was going to have to wear this neck brace for six weeks, be very careful, 
Um, he had broken a bone spur off of the back of his neck instead of actually breaking the neck, but they still thought he had cracked two vertebrae. Well, he went to a um, surgeon this week and he has released him, released him into the wild, uh, basically because they he said that he could understand why the doctors thought that, but he could take his neck brace off. He could move on with his normal life as he felt like it and everything and just be careful. So that was two weeks of roller coaster up and down scariness and thankfulness and lots of prayers. I had not posted anything on social media about this um, previously because it just was something we were dealing with. So we had all of that going on. So I didn't, I got a review recorded, but I hadn't gotten any this this episode. And as I said, I've been knitting and crocheting my emotions. Plus I was had delayed recording this because I wanted these two tops done. And I was so close but ruffles take forever. I really do. I love the ruffles, but they take forever. And I'm actually planning on doing another flutter butt shirt, but I'm going to do it without the bottom ruffle or even the side ruffle because I really like the way that that fit me. Um, I'll put a picture here real quick. I liked how the base of this top fit me. So I am, I have that, it's like I need more things to wear that I've knitted, but okay, I am not a shawl person necessarily. I have a few shawls. I don't mind making them, but I just don't wear them that much. So I've got a bunch of tops <laughs> and sweaters for all seasons. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's my little story of, you know, what's been happening. So instead of going on the yarn crawl, I'm going to be going to Virginia, and I'm hoping to be able to hit a couple of yarn shops there um, while we're there or while I'm there. So that's about it for me for right now. I will see you next month. Please do go over and... Um, jump on with the Ravelry page, send me what you would like to make for your fall, you know, post on there and everything. Let's get that going. Uh, this is going to be the first time that I've hosted a make along on Ravelry. I'm not doing it on Instagram for the same reason a whole bunch of other makers are not because they limit what you can see and it's just not fair. So doing it between Ravelry and um, going up, just by email, that's the best way that I can figure to do it at this time. All right, so what else? Oh, oh, what is it called? Not Twitch. I'm going to put a link down below and I'll put the information here. One of the girls from um, the yarn shop that I hang out with on Sundays, uh, she has started showing her crocheting and doing the Twitch. I'll put it here. But she does live um, videos showing her all, all she's doing. If you love crochet, go take it, a look at it and everything. Hang out with her. I know that this is usually a gamer um, setting, but apparently crafters are jumping in there too. And it has, she has opened me up to a whole new arena of um, doing some lives and everything on there. And I wanted to encourage her and just spread the love. And so if you have an interest in taking a look at that, uh, go for it. I'll, like I said, I'll put the information below. Okay. So that really is it. <laughs> for this month. I will see you next month in September. Let's see what all comes out because, you know, 
I've got a couple of different things. Uh, some of the Virginia trip I may not post until October, but uh, let's have some fun and let me know what you're working on. See you soon.